In the captivating realm of football, few names resonate with as much promise and skill as Jadon Sancho. From the vibrant pitches of London to the iconic stages of Borussia, Dortmund, and Manchester United, Sancho's rise through the ranks was nothing short of meteoric. His exquisite blend of flair, speed, and technical prowess established him as one of the brightest talents in European football. However, the current chapters of Sancho's career present a narrative at odds with the soaring heights of his past successes. Despite his undeniable talent, he finds himself grappling with a period of uncertainty and challenges. The once flourishing winger, heralded for his mesmerizing runs and creative brilliance, now stands at a crossroads, facing questions about form and impact. This contrast of brilliance and struggle forms the poignant backdrop of Jadon Sancho's footballing journey, a tale that unfolds with twists and turns, leaving fans and enthusiasts eagerly anticipating the next chapters in his compelling story. Jadon Sancho's prodigious talent, which would later captivate the footballing world, manifested itself conspicuously from the very inception of his playing days on the pitches of Kennington, a vibrant locality in South London. Born on March 25, 2000, Sancho's journey into football began against the backdrop of the urban landscapes that have produced some of the game's most iconic figures. In the heart of Kennington, where the echoes of street football reverberate through the community, Sancho's early forays into the sport reflected an innate ability that set him apart. The local pitches, often teeming with aspiring footballers, became the crucible where Sancho honed his skills, showcasing a blend of technical finesse audacious dribbling, and an innate understanding of the beautiful game. The vibrant football culture of South London not only shaped Sancho's technical prowess, but also instilled in him a resilience and hunger for success that would serve as pillars in his professional journey. The local pitches of Kennington, where dreams are cultivated and skills are honed, played an integral role in shaping the footballing prodigy who would go on to be coveted by some of the biggest clubs in Europe. A figure who worked where Jadon Sancho spent his formative years shared insights with Goal about the exceptional talents of the English football prodigy. From the tender age of six, Sancho's innate abilities were already leaving a mark on the local pitches, according to the recollections of this playground worker. He stated that at the age of six, Sancho's extraordinary skills were already setting him apart from his peers, and the standout feature, as recounted, was his remarkable dribbling ability, with young Sancho effortlessly maneuvering past opponents with a flair that belied his age. In this local setting, Jaden Sancho's path intersected with that of Nelson, who would go on to become not only his acquaintance, but also a close friend. The camaraderie that blossomed between them set the stage for a dynamic partnership that would soon come to define local football in the area. Fate took them in different directions when Nelson was scouted and subsequently signed by Arsenal, while Sancho, showcasing his talents, secured a schoolboy's contract with Watford. At the tender age of 11, Sancho embarked on a pivotal chapter in his football journey by enrolling in the Watford Academy, a significant step that required him to venture far from the familiar confines of his home. From the earliest stages of his footballing aspirations, Jadon Sancho harbored a profound dream of gracing the pitch for one of Europe's top football clubs and proudly representing his country on the international stage. This enduring vision became the driving force behind his relentless pursuit of excellence, propelling him to strive for greatness both at the club level and in the colors of the national team. At the age of 14, Jadon Sancho made a pivotal transition in his footballing journey by joining the Manchester City Academy, leaving behind his time at Watford. In a dazzling debut for the Manchester City under-16s, Sancho showcased his goal-scoring ability by netting an impressive five goals, a feat that underscored his immediate impact within the academy ranks. Notably, his tenure at the Manchester City Academy coincided with the presence of another emerging talent, Phil Foden. This created a competitive yet supportive environment that propelled both players to greater heights. As they honed their skills side by side, the duo became emblematic of the exciting young talent brewing within the Manchester City youth system. In 2017, Jadon Sancho was earmarked as a pivotal part of the club's future, garnering recognition for his immense talent. Remarkably, 
he was presented with a lucrative £30,000 per week contract, a testament to the high regard in which he was held by the club's management, all before making his official debut. This early display of confidence and investment underscored the belief in Sancho's potential and the anticipation surrounding his imminent impact within the team. Declining the offer, Sancho opted against committing to Manchester City, driven by a desire to pursue regular starting opportunities that seemed elusive in the Premier League club. Seizing the chance, Borussia Dortmund entered the picture, securing his services for a transfer fee of £10 million. This move marked a significant juncture in Sancho's career, as he embarked on a new chapter in German football seeking the playing time and development opportunities that he believed would propel his career to greater heights. In January 2018, Jadon Sancho was granted his inaugural starting opportunity in a match against Wolfsburg, concluding the season with one goal in 12 appearances. Subsequently, he found his rhythm and showcased remarkable progress, earning recognition as the Bundesliga Player of the Month in October of that year. Furthermore, Sancho etched his name in Borussia Dortmund's history by becoming the youngest ever scorer in the UEFA Champions League after netting against Atletico Madrid. His stellar performances did not go unnoticed by Gareth Southgate, the coach of the England national team, who closely monitored Sancho's development. In October 2018, Sancho was rewarded with his first senior team debut for England in a match against Croatia. Notably, he displayed his goal-scoring prowess by securing a brace in a Euro qualifier against Kosovo shortly thereafter. During the 2019-2020 season, Jadon Sancho showcased his exceptional footballing prowess by netting an impressive 17 goals in the league coupled with a remarkable 16 assists. Leading the charts in completed dribbles, he outperformed every other player in that category, earning a well-deserved place in the team of the season. At this juncture, his market value soared to an astounding 120 million euros, a testament to his outstanding contributions on the field and his burgeoning status as one of the most coveted talents in European football. The acquisition of Erling Haaland proved to be a transformative moment for Jadon Sancho, as the duo forged an exceptional partnership that left a lasting impact on Borussia Dortmund's attacking prowess. This dynamic pairing blossomed in the 2020-2021 season, with Sancho demonstrating his versatility by scoring an impressive 16 goals and providing a remarkable 20 assists in 38 games. The synergy between Sancho and Holland not only elevated their individual performances, but also contributed significantly to the team's success. Their on-field collaboration showcased a seamless understanding as Sancho's creative flair and goal-scoring instincts complemented Holland's clinical finishing. The synergy between the two not only resulted in a formidable offensive force for Borussia Dortmund, but also solidified their reputation as one of the most prolific attacking duos in European football. Beyond the impressive statistics, Sancho's influence on the game extended to his ability to create scoring opportunities, link play, and navigate defenses with finesse. His 20 assists underscored not only his goal-scoring proficiency, but also his playmaking skills, making him a crucial asset in Dortmund's attacking strategy. As the season unfolded, the collaborative efforts of Sancho and Holland propelled Borussia Dortmund to competitive heights, making them a formidable force in both domestic and European competitions. The numbers and impact generated by Sancho during this period painted a vivid picture of a player in the prime of his career, flourishing alongside a striking partner who complemented his skills, ultimately contributing to a memorable chapter in Borussia Dortmund's recent footballing history. Predictably, Jadon Sancho secured his place in the 26-man squad for the Euro 2020, a testament to his exceptional form leading up to the tournament. However, an unexpected twist unfolded as he found limited playing time on the pitch. This raised eyebrows particularly given Sancho's status as the most in-form England winger during the competition. The perplexity surrounding Sancho's underutilization became more pronounced when considering the circumstances of other key players. Raheem Sterling, typically a dynamic force, was grappling with a noticeable dip in form, while Jack Grealish was still recovering from an injury. In addition, Bukayo Saka, though promising, was relatively young and inexperienced on the international stage. What intensified the intrigue was Gareth Southgate's apparent preference for the aforementioned options over Sancho, who had been consistently delivering standout performances.
The decision seemed puzzling, especially in light of Sancho's prowess and the crucial role he played for his club leading up to the tournament. This unexpected turn of events sparked debates among football enthusiasts and pundits alike, with many questioning the reasoning behind Southgate's team selections. The public discourse focused on the apparent discrepancy between Sancho's scintillating form and his limited involvement in key matches during Euro 2020. In a defining moment during the Euro 2020 final, Gareth Southgate made a decision that would cast an unforeseen shadow over Jadon Sancho's career. With just one minute remaining in the tense match, Sancho, who had seen minimal action in the tournament and hadn't even warmed up, was unexpectedly subbed on by Southgate to take the crucial fourth penalty in the shootout. The weight of the entire nation's hopes rested on his shoulders. As we all know, Sancho's penalty attempt didn't find the back of the net, marking one of the most agonizing moments in his career. This miss, occurring in the final moments of such a high-stakes match, proved to be a pivotal juncture, triggering a cascade of criticism, scrutiny, and intense pressure that seemed to overshadow him. Contrary to the initial optimism surrounding Sancho's summer, with top clubs like Chelsea, Liverpool, and Manchester United expressing interest in acquiring his services, the aftermath of the Euro 2020 final painted a different picture. The miss appeared to catalyze a shift in perception as pundits and fans dissected the moment, subjecting Sancho to unwarranted scrutiny. As the transfer saga unfolded, it became a tale of resilience, redemption, and the unyielding belief in a player's ability to overcome setbacks. The journey that followed the Euro 2020 final would see Sancho navigating the highs and lows of professional football, a narrative that transcended the boundaries of the pitch and delved into the intricate dynamics of fame, pressure, and the enduring pursuit of excellence. The protracted saga of Jadon Sancho's potential move to Manchester United unfolded like a captivating chapter in a footballing epic. The backdrop was set with the persistent desire of the Premier League giant to secure his signature, a quest that spanned a staggering 18 months. Window after window, Manchester United had sought to bring Sancho into their fold, only to encounter roadblocks and challenges that thwarted their efforts. Amidst the backdrop of transfer speculation and a backdrop of consistent interest, Sancho began signaling his inclination to depart Borussia Dortmund. The summer of 2020 marked a turning point in the narrative as negotiations between the two clubs gained momentum. The intricate dance of discussions and deal-making, often shrouded in secrecy, finally saw a breakthrough. After a prolonged and intricate negotiation process, the footballing world received the much-anticipated news. Manchester United and Borussia Dortmund had reached a historic agreement. The transfer fee, a figure that spoke volumes about Sancho's value in the market, was set at an impressive 85 million euros. The culmination of this lengthy and suspenseful saga marked a significant milestone in Sancho's career and stirred the excitement of football enthusiasts worldwide. As the ink dried on the contract and the deal was officially sealed, the anticipation surrounding Sancho's arrival at Old Trafford intensified. Jadon Sancho's inaugural season donning the iconic red jersey of Manchester United unfolded with unexpected twists and challenges, deviating significantly from the anticipated plot. The initial chapters of this footballing saga revealed a surprising narrative as Sancho found himself navigating a series of hurdles that impacted his playing time and on-field contributions. The season commenced with an unforeseen delay in Sancho's integration into the first team. It wasn't until November that he completed a full 90 minutes for Manchester United, a circumstance that added a layer of complexity to his adjustment to the Premier League and the team's playing style. As the season progressed, Sancho encountered a string of performances that fell short of the lofty expectations that had accompanied his high-profile move from Borussia Dortmund. The statistics, often scrutinized in the world of football, told a story of underperformance. A mere five goals and three assists for the entirety of the 2021-2022 season. This statistical output represented a stark contrast to the electric displays of skill and flair that had defined Sancho's earlier years raising questions and fueling discussions among fans and pundits alike. The transition to a new league, coupled with the challenges posed by adapting to a different tactical system, seemed to have posed unforeseen obstacles for the talented winger. 
Yet, amidst the scrutiny and analysis, it's crucial to dissect the broader context surrounding Sancho's debut season. The weight of expectations, compounded by the Euro 2020 penalty miss and the weighty transfer fee, placed an immense burden on the young winger's shoulders. The summer transfer window brought another seismic shift to the narrative. In a move that sent shockwaves through the footballing world, Manchester United secured the return of Cristiano Ronaldo, a club legend and one of the greatest footballers of all time. The decision to bring back Ronaldo wasn't merely about bolstering the squad. It carried the weight of a strategic move to thwart Manchester City, who was on the brink of signing the iconic forward. This strategic maneuver added another layer to the narrative, altering the dynamics within the squad and reshaping the team's tactical approach. Sancho, amidst these transformative shifts, found himself adapting to a changing landscape both on and off the pitch. The presence of a footballing icon like Ronaldo added a new dimension to the team dynamics, influencing playing styles and reshuffling the hierarchy within the squad. Suddenly, the spotlight that had initially shone brightly on Sancho began to shift, with the legendary Portuguese forward commanding attention and headlines. The magnetic presence of Ronaldo not only altered the narrative, but also redefined the team's identity and playing philosophy. A parallel narrative unfolded with managerial changes, as both Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Ralph Rangnick took the helm at different junctures. The managerial crises cast a shadow over the club, further complicating the already intricate process of adaptation for players like Sancho. Solskjaer's departure and Rangnick's arrival ushered in a period of tactical adjustments and strategic realignment. For a player in his first season, such managerial upheavals presented a unique set of challenges. The need to adapt to different tactical philosophies and understand the expectations of a new manager became an additional layer to Sancho's already complex journey. The confluence of these factors painted a vivid picture of the tumultuous landscape that Sancho navigated during his debut season at Manchester United. The interplay of legendary arrivals, shifts in gameplay strategies, and the ebb and flow of managerial transitions created a tapestry of complexities that demanded adaptability and resilience from the young winger. The appointment of Eric Ten Hag as the manager of Manchester United brought with it a wave of anticipation, with many expecting Jadon Sancho to play a pivotal role in the Dutch manager's plans. However, the unfolding chapters of this footballing tale took an unexpected turn as Sancho continued to grapple with a persistent run of poor form. The much-anticipated resurgence under Ten Hag seemed elusive for the talented winger. In the intricate dance between player and manager, expectations were high for a revitalized Sancho under Ten Hag's guidance. The footballing community, fans, and pundits alike envisioned a renaissance, a narrative where the player's potential would be reignited under the stewardship of the new manager. However, the reality on the pitch told a different story, with Sancho struggling to find his rhythm and replicate the scintillating performances that had marked his earlier years. Amidst the uncertainties at the club level, there remained a glimmer of hope for Sancho on the international stage. Despite the ongoing challenges, many believed that his significance in England's future plans would secure him a spot in the World Cup 2022 squad. The faith in Sancho's potential and the belief that he could still be a linchpin in the national team's aspirations fueled optimism among fans. However, when Gareth Southgate, the England manager, announced the squad for the World Cup, the collective expectations were met with surprise and disappointment. Sancho's name was notably absent from the list, a decision that diverged from the prevailing sentiment. The omission raised questions and sparked discussions about the factors influencing Southgate's choices and the implications for Sancho's international career. A notable chapter unfolded last year, marked by a public rift between the talented winger and his manager, Eric Ten Hag. The discord began when Ten Hag, in a statement that reverberated through football circles, attributed Sancho's omission from the squad set to face Arsenal to an alleged unacceptable training attitude. The reaction was swift and unequivocal. Sancho took to social media to promptly rebuff Ten Hag's claims. His denial not only refuted the allegations, but also thrust the disagreement into the public domain, intensifying the spotlight on the strained relationship between player and manager. The aftermath of this public exchange added a layer of complexity to an already tense situation. 
In response to the public denial, the managerial decision seemed to take a punitive turn. Sancho found himself distanced from the team, kept away until a gesture of contrition, in the form of an apology, was extended. However, Sancho, resolute in his stance, refrained from issuing an apology, and the standoff endured. But let's talk the about Jaden Sancho. He has further fueled speculations and discussions within the footballing community with fans and pundits dissecting the implications for Sancho's standing within the squad and the dynamics of his relationship with the manager. In the present moment, Jadon Sancho has made a noteworthy return to Borussia Dortmund for the remainder of the season. The prospect of his eventual return to Manchester United remains uncertain and veiled in unpredictability. Sancho, widely recognized as a fantastic player, has embarked on a loan spell to his familiar grounds at Dortmund and the collective hope within the footballing community is that this stint contributes to him finding his footing once again. The intricacies of Sancho's future trajectory, whether it involves a definitive return to Manchester United or takes an unforeseen turn, lie in the realm of speculation. Jadon Sancho's professional journey has been marked by a myriad of challenges and triumphs. Thank you for checking out this video. How good do you think Jadon Sancho really is? And what other factors do you think affected his time at Manchester United? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you've enjoyed this video, then you'll enjoy the video showing on your screen right now. Click now and we'll see you in the next one.